Good afternoon. Scene News is live at noon. I'm Mahalia Joseph. And I'm Vidya Rampal with Sports. Topping the news at this time, members of Cabinet are at this time locked in talks about plans for 2017. The meeting is taking place at the Diplomatic Center in St. Anne's. The two days of meeting will see non-Cabinet members of government and all permanent secretaries sharing their views upon conclusion of the day's activities. The media will be invited to a briefing with Prime Minister Dr. Keith Rowley. And you can stay with C News throughout the day for all the updates. And our reporter, Janine Brown, is at the Diplomatic Center. Janine, what can you tell us? So I'm outside the Diplomatic Center here in St. Anne's, where government is expected to be conducting their two-day cabinet retreat to be held both today and tomorrow. Now, it's the second retreat of this nature under the Dr. Rowley-led administration. Of course, the first one was held in February of last year in Tobago. So it's just about one year later that we're having the, the meeting today. And we do expect that the conversation will focus strongly on the economic situation that Trinidad and Tobago currently faces. Of course, this has been a topic that the government has been discussing since they entered office in 2015. So we expect to find out how they intend to pave the way forward in the new year, 2017. We've been here since about 8.30 this morning, and we haven't spotted any government ministers as yet, but we have seen members of the Trinidad and Tobago Police Service, as well as Army personnel and Ministry vehicles, both entering and leaving the premises. The Prime Minister is expected to address the media at the end of today's proceedings. We're not sure what time that will be, but you can, of course, tune in to see where we will have up-to-date stories on this meeting um, throughout today. I am Janine Brown reporting for CNews, and we continue to wait here at the Diplomatic Center in St. Anne's. Thank you so much, Janine. And with the government members locked in talks at this time, political analyst Ansel St. Hilaire is making some recommendations to them on a possible way to get out of the economic slump. According to John M. Keynes, one way for a country to get out of a recession is for the government to spend more money, as failure to do so will see the recession last for a longer period. This theory is being suggested by political analyst Ansel St. Hilaire. Where they would do that injection by... Uh, setting in motion certain projects, generally in the construction sector and infrastructure development. So if, if the government can really get uh, the agenda going with respect to its housing plans, then you have a generation of income. Housing, houses are being developed. The multiplier effect of a number of workers coming on board with that stimulates the uh, 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 economy. He said government can also look at spending money in general infrastructure development, but he stressed the need for attention to be placed on the agriculture sector as well. However, his suggestion may be debatable as he wants government to get workers from other countries to fill the gap which may be there. Bring, whether it's Haitians, whether it's Cubans, bring them in and set them straight on agricultural projects. However, he was quick to defend his statement. My premise is that Trinidadians don't want to go into agriculture. Uh, we are moving away from it. We have, be we have become, I mean, the old slave mentality thing that we're walking away from slavery and we now want the colour and tie jobs. And that has been the focus, more so among the African community. And, and, and that there really is an aversion to the hardcore work required in agriculture. Dr. St. Hilaire was speaking on CTV's Good Morning Trinidad and Tobago. The period of conciliation regarding Petrotrin workers' wage increase for the period 2014 to 2017 officially expires today. So it's essentially the last day for the representing union and the company to meet. President General of the Oil Field Workers Trade Union, Ansel Roger, will be making a statement regarding this and new information reaching the union pertaining to the negotiations. Last Friday, after talks broke down with the company, the union threatened to strike. It told the public to fill their tanks as there will be a shortage if the workers do not carry out their functions. Also, the OWTU and the Ministry of Labor will be meeting this afternoon on the matter. You're watching the C News Live report at noon. Remember, you can keep up to date with all the latest news on our website at ctvtt.com or you can check out our Facebook and Twitter pages at C News Live. CEO of the Energy Chamber, Dr. Thackeray Dax Driver, is expressing concern about the impact the planned strike action of Petrotrin workers will have not only on the company, but the country. He spoke on CTV's Good Morning Trinidad and Tobago. 
CEO of the Energy Chamber, Dr. Thackeray Dax Driver, says Petrotrain has to be very careful if the workers do strike. He said with the company's oil production still very low, it needs to attract investors, and if workers do not carry out their functions as necessary, they can lose the possible investments. Petrotrain it has very large debt obligations that it has to, it has to meet. Um, because it's a state-owned company, those are tied to the country's debt rating. So the international rating agencies will uh, you know, look at the ability of Petrotrin to repay the, the, the loans. If they think there's question marks about that, that puts uh, additional debt burden onto uh, all of the citizens of the, of, of the country. He said the country can also be downgraded by the rating agencies. Which means borrowing becomes more expensive. So in a situation where the Minister of Finance is having to borrow to, to keep the country, um, you know, keep expenditure um, from, the, from the government going, that puts more cost on us. So it's a sort of a downward spiral. <coughs> so I think that is a, that is a major um, you know, a factor um, that, that the country has to consider, not just the fuel, but also what it means for, for, for our debt. He noted Petrotrin is a larger owner of foreign exchange and uses a lot as well to purchase crude oil. He said there is need to improve the country's output in that regard. Increasing domestic crude production has a big impact on the availability of foreign exchange. Now, if we're having to buy fuel internationally because we're not producing enough refinery, that is also a negative on our foreign exchange situation. So it has these much wider implications beyond just you know, driving and moving people around. Dr. Driver was speaking on CTV's Good Morning Trinidad and Tobago. Today is nomination day for the Tobago House of Assembly elections. All candidates with intention of contesting the January 23rd THA elections will file their nomination papers at the Elections and Boundaries Commission office uptown Scarborough. From what we have been hearing, everything is running pretty smoothly. Nomination day would confirm all contenders, including those who may be going into the race as independent candidates. Our Tobago correspondent, Patricia Nicholson, is on the line to give us an update on what's taking place. Good afternoon, Patricia. How's the nomination process thus far? Good afternoon, Mahalia. It has been a very busy morning in Scarborough, Tobago, because of nomination day. All parties, all three parties, actually four parties, PNN, PDP, Tobago Forward, and the Movement for Transformation, have been uh, in Tobago in Scarborough and the candidates have already filed nominations. I think the last uh, group that we're waiting on now to complete the nomination uh, process is the PDP, but it has been a lot of action in Scarborough. Uh, from the, the large crowds walking through Scarborough and then coming to do the, uh, the to file their papers, to persons just outside of the actual office waiting on the uh, respective candidates uh, coming outside, making noise, it has been loud busy, but the process is moving smoothly based on the comments that we've received from all candidates. Well, thank you so much, Patricia, for that update. And of course, we'll have more on the nomination day process as the day goes by. It's time now for a look at the weather forecast. Predominantly sunny and breezy conditions despite one or two light showers in a few confined areas. Tonight will be mostly clear and cool. Funeral service for Chutney icon Anand Yankaran will be held this Thursday at Kuva Exchange Housing Development. According to Mr. Yankaran's wife, the service will start at 9 a.m., after which his body will be taken to the Waterloo cremation site. <coughs> Expected at the funeral is other Chutney artists and members belonging to the music fraternity. Mr. Yankaran passed away on Monday after suffering a heart attack. Chief Executive Officer of SouthEx and promoter of the Chutney Sukamona competition, George Singh, confirmed that there will be a tribute in the show dedicated to the late Chutney icon Anand Yankaran. He was speaking to C News when he made the comment. All right, we're definitely working on something. Um, I haven't finalized what we're going to do exactly. Um, I will be making a, a official announcement within the next few days. A 24-year-old man was killed in Mova early on Tuesday. Details are still coming in, but CNews understands the body of Simeon Selvin was discovered on Angelina Terrace. His body bore multiple gunshot wounds. That incident raised the murder tool for the year to three. 
To some other news now, former Minister of Justice Herbert Volney has received online backlash for his views on an alleged scandal involving Angostura Chairman Dr. Rolf Balgobin. In a Trinidad Express newspaper report on Tuesday, it was revealed a complaint was made at the Movar police station against Dr. Balgumin by a senior female executive at the company last November. Commenting on the matter on Facebook, the former High Court judge said many women out there would be happy to have Rolf attempt a hit upon them. These things happen in life and many a time go on to long-lasting personal relationships and even divorce or marriage. Clearly, a young law lawyer saw an opportunity for fame in advising on this course. The comment was deleted after subsequent commentators criticized his stance and Mr. Volney responded, I have removed my view on this out of deference to the sensitivities of women and men affected by bona fide instances of harassment. Trinidad and Tobago Farmers Union is saying if given the opportunity, they will be able to turn the country's economy around in less than a year. Its president, Shiraz Khan, says the agriculture sector has been treated like the outside child for a long time, but it has a lot to offer. Rishi Harinanan has more. The president of the Farmers Union wants government to look at ways in which the agriculture sector can help the country get out of the current economic instability. If the emphasis and the energy is placed behind agriculture, more so vegetable production and short crop production, or even in some cases, fish production, we could turn around the economy in six months. There are certain, um, what I should say, restraints over the years that farmers cannot continue to produce. And you know, land tenure has been a, a, a real thorn in, into the farmer's um, uh, life. He told Good Morning Trinidad and Tobago it's the small man who continues to suffer and with concerns still surrounding the supply of foreign exchange, the farmers can also help with that. Everybody complaining about the foreign exchange. The poor people, the poor people, the small man in this country are being trampled upon. Now, you have a problem for, with foreign exchange, but yet you're spending seven, eight billion dollars TT to import food into this country. And I am almost certain if emphasis is placed into the agriculture sector, that could be cut by almost 50% within one year. He went on to say local farmers are very competitive. However, there are challenges which must be addressed. ADB is the only bank that we can get an agriculture loan from. The commercial bank, you won't get that or any other financial institution. Even look with Netco, if you go there for an agricultural grant or anything, they send it to ADB, you can't go there because it have ADB set up for that. But ADB, the whole ADB structure has to change and become more farmer friendly. Mr. Khan says if government heeds their call, in less than a year there will be a change in the country's outlook. And the tilapia industry can be used to help Trinidad and Tobago's economy. One way it can do so is by allowing people to produce feed for livestock. This according to tilapia specialist Ken Vera. We're going to be filleting the fish. We're going to be taking the head, the middle bone and the guts and making a meal, a fish meal, that could be put into animal feed or even to feed the fish. The argument is how you go feed the fish, fish, fish. But the law of nature is big fish eat small fish. So it is natural. Fish meal is a foundational element of a lot of other feeds for livestock. So even if, you do, if there's excess from your fish production, you could feed it to the, incorporate it in the, in the feeds for other animals and stuff like that. The skin of the tilapia can also be useful when tanned. We have been able to develop three methods for doing that process and the textures that come out. Now there's work to be done in terms of value added, but I've made a watch band out of it. I've done other, um, like a little purse and stuff like that, using the fish skin. That's a lot about fish there, Vidya. <laughs> Vidya, can you tell us what's happening in sport and does it have anything to do with fish? Yeah, well, in fact, <laughs> a big fish has joined the Soka Warriors camp. I'll tell you who he is coming up after the break. Hi there, we start your sports with some news of football. The big fish that Mahalia alluded to earlier is the former national team head coach Russell Latipi, who has joined Trinidad and Tobago's technical staff ahead of this week's Gold Cup qualifiers. The former Rangers and Porto midfielder was appointed head 
assistant coach to Tom St. Feet in December, but was unable to join the team for the Nicaragua international friendlies due to previous commitments in Portugal. Latapi has now joined the training camp, and St. Feet was pleased to have the 48-year-old in the ranks. The Belgian said that with Latapi on the technical team, the squad is much stronger. Now, Latapi's inclusion is a welcome development in the Gold Cup campaign that has been rocked by the exclusion of three players from the 20-man squad. One of the players, Jamal Williams, told C Sports that he did consume alcohol before going to the team camp and has apologized for his behavior. Ken Fuentes has more. First and foremost, I, I just like to apologize to the nation for, for my indiscipline and apologize to the head coach Tom for my indiscipline and apologize to the team and all the guys that you know and I know it wasn't the, the right thing for me to do at the time you know I was indiscipline so I faced the consequences he made his, his decision and what he wants to do to maybe to help better the team. A heartfelt apology from forward Jamal Williams who was dropped from the national men's football team by coach Tom St. Feet ahead of the Gold Cup qualifiers. Williams says he understands that the coach had to set an example, but also took time to explain why he, along with defender Daniel Cyrus, were late in showing up to the team's living camp in Carrasmith's Claxton Bay. I had, was, I had a personal situation. You know, I ended up try, getting in contact with Daniel Cyrus, you know, to come and pick me up. And I think he was running a little late. I don't know why, but I mean, we didn't reach on time, so we faced the consequences. Cyrus, in an interview with Wired 868, said he got a flat on his way to camp while in St. Helena. And since he did not have a jack in his car, enlisted the help of a friend from Santa Rosa. Hence the reason for arriving an hour and a half late to camp. The players were both accused of smelling of alcohol on their arrival, a charge which Cyrus denies, while Williams admitted to having consumed alcohol. Uh, we get it, we get, we get, um... Well, as in 10 years off, of course, I, I myself personally, I had a couple of drinks, you know. It was not much, you know, because I know I'm a professional, so, yeah, of course I had a couple of drinks, but to me, I don't know, he said he got this smell, so maybe he got this smell, so, and he made his decision, so I just had to live by it and learn from it, you know, and as I say, try, try and be as professional as I can to come back and try to make a team. He says, despite what has happened, he has the confidence in coach Tom St. Feet to guide the Warriors to the Gold Cup and World Cup alike. Oh well for me at the moment the guy is doing well. As you see we got a good result in the last game in Nicaragua. You know everybody's trying to, to put the best foot forward and do what's best for the team and for the country, you know. And so far coach, he's been doing very well, you know, he, he has the team together, he, he he's trying to put into us what he wants from us, you know. And so far the vibes is good and and for me, yeah, I'm 100% sure with this coach we can qualify. Horse racing now and control unit edged this one's for run by three quarters of a length in the Science Gold Sprint on Monday at Santa Rosa Park. This one's for run had beaten control unit in the Gold Cup last week, but on the turf track this week, jockey Wilma Galvez engineered a reversal. They run toward the half mile pole now and head into the far turn run and control unit and CF Gnance going at a good clip here. 600 out there, Aldo get away by three links to Holy Man. Trini Navigator still fourth down toward the inside. This one's for run. This one's for run rallying up on the outside and coming on well. Then we drop back to Indian Medicine at the back there, Sweet Genius. Here they come. Control unit turns for home in front. Control unit three links now four now five. Control unit opening up. This one's for on set down for the drive on the outside. See if Ganan's still there. Indian Medicine trying to come through in between horses, but control unit has the lead, has the jump. This one's for on is closing. Control unit. This one's for on surging. Control unit. It's going to be close. Control unit defends and wins. Control unit held on. This one's for Ron was flying at the end. Boy, oh boy, control unit and Will McGalvey's win the Science Gold Sprint Grade 3, our first stakes for 2017. Well, that's your sports. And that's the C News Report at noon. I'm Mahalia Joseph. And I'm Vidya Rampal. Remember, for up-to-date and breaking news throughout the day, visit the C News website at ctvtt.com.